And I want to deal with this question I asked or asked ask earlier this week. And then I want to get talk to you all, right, everybody? And the mama. <laughs> everybody and they mama if you're black. And it's their mama if you're white. And Joel is on his way in. I can hear him coming now. He black. One day this week, earlier this week, I asked the question that I had, had an understanding about finally. Not that I had been thinking about this question. It's Bible Thumper Thursday. Some of you might remember uh, in Mark 1, 40 through 44, a man with lepros leprosy came to him and begged, if you are willing you can make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him. And Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone. I'm healing you now, but don't tell anyone. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely. And Jesus went, what the? <laughs> Spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stay outside in lonely places. I've never heard it written all like that before. Is it, what Bible is this? Uh, no, I never heard that either. Uh, I think it's the New International Version. Oh, no wonder. NIV. They're going to mess it up. <laughs> S uh, Mark 7 to 31, 36. There are some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hands on him. After he took him away from the crowd... Jesus put his finger into his ears, the man's ears. At this, the man's ears were open. His tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. And then he commanded them that they should tell no one. But, but the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. Amazing. It's, he telling them, don't tell it. Oh, they're black. And they told it. <laughs> Here's some more information about the Gospel of Mark from Pure Pew Pursue. Pursue God's video. Watch this. See, the book of Mark is the shortest gospel of the four gospels. It's probably written around 55 AD. It's an action gospel with vivid descriptions and fewer teachings than the other gospels. So, for example, you'll see verses like this from Mark chapter 1. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea because they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Now, let's talk a little bit about the author. The early church unanimously believed that this account was written by John Mark, who likely got his information from Peter's preaching and memoirs. Mark wrote this account to show the world who Jesus is and what he has done. The central theme of Mark is outlined in the first verse of the book. So here it is, Mark chapter 1, verse 1. Here's how Mark starts the book. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. Clear, concise, and compelling. The Son of God. Yeah. See, all you people who think Jesus is God, the Son he is the son, not the father, dummies. What the? <laughs> so I want to ask, ask, I'm going to start with Hassan again. I know he responded. When Jesus healed the man and he said, go and, I mean, don't tell anyone. And the man went and told it anyway. Why didn't Jesus, why did Jesus tell him not to tell anyone? Uh, yeah, I just think that... Um yeah, he just wanted, I think, people to know for themselves and have faith because the faith is what, you know, would heal them and that that they could do it on their own, you know, kind of 
understanding that uh, the belief and the faith in God is what's healing. And if they, I think if it would have became too publicized, it would have been like, oh, well, there's this magic man down the street. You know, let me go get my leg fixed or my thing. And it would have just became like a physical, practical thing where it's like, oh, this, you know, got to come here to get my thing fixed or whatever. And (laughs) I think he wanted it to be more of, yeah, like a genuine thing of knowing that they had faith and and belief in in God and that they could be healed. So he didn't want it to become, like, silly. Amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you say Jesus told him, don't tell anyone I've healed you? Uh, I think he didn't want to create, in my opinion, I could be wrong, I think he didn't want to create This a, is Joel Friday. That was her son, the audio engineer, the expert on the show. Joel Friday, the TV, he black. This show is here every day except Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And yeah. an expert here. Yeah, I think he just didn't want to cause like an uproar because of the fact that he knew that when um, the Pharisees or whoever were going to crucify him, that they were going to do it. He knew that was a prophecy that there was that needed to happen. So I think that he didn't want that to come sooner than when it needed to. But yeah, but the point is he was just trying to, I think he just didn't want to make an uproar so his time wouldn't come sooner than when it needed to be. I'm sorry? I think he just didn't want to make an uproar so his time wouldn't have to come sooner than what it needed to be. What time? His crucifixion. <laughs> so he can heal as much people as possible. Amazing. But I could be wrong. No, I could be and that's nice. intellectual. Amazing. And you say, this is Sean, my producer, <laughs> expert here. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Sean, you say, I like, why did Jesus say don't tell? I like that last part about what, what Joel said, so his time to, wouldn't come sooner than, he, than it needed to be, but... Um, I think it's because he knew that people would go and say, oh, Jesus did this to me. Jesus did this to me. But it wasn't him. It was the Father working through him. So he knew people would get confused by that. Like, oh, they go into town. They say, Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. But he knew, he knew Jesus knew it wasn't him. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah. <laughs> He knew people would be confused by the words and they'd misinterpret what, what just happened. So if he, he knew that it was more important for the people who got healed to, um, to just go through it on their own so that they know right. so that they know what actually happened. Amazing. That's more important than, than other people knowing. To add to what's been said, what I realized the reason he said it is that he told the man not to tell it. Because Jesus knew that the human being, human beings are like animals, that their hearts are evil, that they're wicked, and that if they went out and told them that they had been healed, they were going to try to uh, uh, discourage them and take that away from them and make them doubt themselves because human beings are evil. And uh, if you notice that every time somebody hears the truth, whether it's somebody reading the Bible or someone talking about this or that, every time they hear the truth, they want to go out and start preaching. <laughs> they start running, want to tell somebody else like they're a preacher, rather than being quiet and let the you know let it be revealed to them and become clear. Immediately they want to start preaching, and Jesus didn't want them to do that either. He knew that that would do it, but it was primarily because the human heart is evil, and they know that other human beings would try to make them doubt themselves. Try to steal their steal yep. from there. Isn't yep. that amazing? It is. You know how that you know how they say like if you want change in society, you gotta start locally. Yeah. Like start in your town. Yeah. Start in your town. You could take that another level and say, you you gotta start in your house. Yeah. You gotta fix your house first. And then you could start take that to a whole nother level and say, You gotta start with you. Exactly. Instead of other people. When you start working on yourself, you wake up. You're supposed to really just keep it to yourself and grow. But the devil tell you, oh, you got to go out and tell somebody, tell them how smart you are. Start preaching. Yeah. Tell everybody, stop hating your mama. Tell everybody you hate your daddy. And return to your daddy. You're ready to preach. But all you've done is hurt the truth. You still don't know the truth. But yeah. the ego feels good to make you want to go out yeah, and preach. Involved, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. What do you say about that? The ego gets involved in all things. I, yeah. I agree. 
Yeah. I agree. I mean, it's definitely, I mean, it's hard to really know exactly why. Like, No, that was why. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't, because I mean, it's, if you it's really, something to think about. But I, it, If you really, really, really pay attention to human beings today, even yourself, me or anyone, when you first hear the truth, Aren't you like Randy going to tell yeah, somebody? Yeah, no, that, that happens for sure. Right away. I know you've done yeah. it. You just heard it intellectually. That's for yeah. sure. But it just feels so nice to go and tell yeah. somebody. Yeah. It makes it seem like you're smart or you know what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. Like you think you had it because you got the revelation. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that happened even today. I agree. And then if somebody, if you do know the truth and you go out and tell it, who you, there are people you're telling to, they're feeling jealous. They'll feel the math like you know the truth, and they'll try to take it away from you. Yeah. And also, when you know the truth. That happened right now. Yeah. But when you actually know the truth, a lot of the times when you truly know it, you're not even like in a rush to go explain it or that's share That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's how you know the difference. That's deep. You say, Hassan? So what do you mean by they would try to Come take it? Come back to your mic. What do you mean they would try to take it away from... Uh, they would make you doubt yourself. They would uh, try to do something to make you think that it didn't really happen, he didn't heal you, or you really don't see what you see. I don't think that's what I mean by it. Oh, so like even in regards to Jesus? Yeah. Even, what do you mean by even in regards? Like, oh, so... You're saying that... Is he speaking too far away from his mic or somewhere? Just it does sound a little bit low. I don't uh, know if it's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't there know. you go. That's I'm a little better. Maybe I don't understand. What? I'm trying to understand that. So you mean that the Jesus would have... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fully... Well, I got to hear it again, I think. Well, it, you could also make it worse by telling people the truth. You can make it worse for them because if they start rejecting the truth that you're telling them and you keep at it and you keep trying to get it, get it you tr- keep trying to communicate it to them, you're making it worse because they just get defensive and they try to, they just do their own thing that they were going to do anyway just for their own ego purposes. Yeah. And you're not supposed to force it anywhere on anyone. Right, you can't, yeah, because you make it. You end up making it worse, and then you think you, you feel bad about you know yourself doing that because you think, oh, I, I made it worse for that other person. Oh, so like, okay, so I understand it in a parallel of like in today, like when I hear stuff you say, then I go and say, it and I get a thrill from it. Yeah. So, so that I understand because completely. you've heard the truth, or your intellect tell you you got it. And right away, you want to go out and preach it to others so you can get a thrill from it. Yeah, 100%. But I do also, that. Also, oh, there are people out there that will uh, be jealous that you know the truth, mm. that your heart has changed from anger to love, and they'll try to destroy that. Okay, and you're saying that with Jesus... He knew that about human nature, that human beings are like animals. They're on an animal level. They're evil. And they could, they'll be jealous of that, and so they'll try to take that away from the person by trying to make them doubt themselves mm. or put them down in some kind of way or something because human beings are evil. Well, see, my only thing where I'm just a little bit confused is that, like, if a person is, like, a leper and he can't walk, and then Jesus said, get up and walk, and then he starts walking and dancing, right? Then how does a person at that point... <laughs> I just had an image in my head... Like when the person says, I could walk, and then the other person, another person says, no, that's not true. That's a lie. Do they just fall out? <laughs> Do they doubt and just fall out because the person made them doubt again? That's okay. where I'm confused. So what now? Like. He didn't say that they would do it. He didn't say they would be able to take it, but they would try. That they would try to. Oh, yeah. okay. Because I was wondering, jealous. Yeah, I just wonder, like. I just picture somebody walking and being happy they walk in. Somebody said, no, that's a lie. Jesus is not real. And then they just fall out again. But you know how <laughs> there there could be witnesses there to see this man. They knew him forever. He couldn't walk. Yeah. And they'll see Jesus come by and heal him. And then they'll still say Jesus didn't do that. Yeah. No, that's for sure. Yeah. And it, they've, they did that in the in the Bible, it says, too. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> what a mess. 
And once you believe, like, you know, once you uh, believe, you can't unbelieve. Once once you see, see you can't unsee it. So once they believe that they can walk, they start walking. No matter what anyone else says, like, they can't go back. It's it's amazing how... Go ahead, finish your point. I was going to bring something else up. Yeah. It's amazing how wicked the human heart is. The human heart is pure evil. Really. I had no idea how evil human beings really were until I was able to see they have no love. They are like animals. Yep. Amazing. Yeah, it's all Adam's fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Eve's fault. Adam shouldn't have listened to the woman. Yes, that's where you're about to say something else. Is it better to um, disturb comfortable people or is it better to comfort disturbed people? So what? Is it better to disturb the comfortable or is it better to comfort the disturbed? Is it better to disturb the comfortable or is it better to... Comfort the disturbed. Comfort disturbed people. Oh. And what did Jesus do? Interesting. Did he disturb comfortable people or did he comfort disturbed people? You say it, Joel? Uh... (laughs) Uh, that's a doozy. <laughs> I think he disturbed the comfortable. Because, like, the the comfort, the other way around. What's the other way around? Comfort disturbed people. I don't think that you should comfort disturbed people. You let them suffer and die. So I think he he did the he other said, thing. He said, is it better to, am I right? Is yeah, it is better, it, is to, it better to, comfort to, the, be, to comfort the disturbed? The disturbed or disturbed? The comfort people. I think disturb the comfort, but I got to smoke on it more. But I think that's that's my final answer. What will you say, Hassan? Definitely, yeah, disturb the comfortable. And what will you say, Sean? I say comfort the disturbed. I say neither. That's Dang. not the question. Yeah, that's the no. good answer. It's not better. I, you're not supposed to disturb the uncomfortable or comfort, I mean, or yeah, you're not supposed to. You're saying you're not supposed to disturb comfortable people, and right. you're not supposed to comfort disturb. Not people. at all. You messed up the whole game. You're supposed to play along. Pick one. But I think uh, no, no. <laughs> but that yeah. But huh. truth, truth, I think is disruptive to like to, to evil people. Yeah, and to people who are just sleeping, like yeah. not not comfortable could be like not awake, like just. So I think like yeah. Yeah, there's huh. a there's a a famous quote about art and how the purpose of art is to comfort the disturbed and to disturb the comfortable. Oh. So that's where I got that from. Oh, I see. Just nice. a quick question on the Jesus thing. Yeah. So uh, what about the the lady who grabbed the string of his garment and then she was healed just by touching the fabric of right. Jesus? Right. D- so do you think any of that has to do with the faith that the person has in God or in the 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 power of God that that has to do with the healing. Well, she believes she believed that if she can, in advance, she had heard about this guy, and she believed that if she could just touch him, she could be healed, and it was because of her faith. And when you come back to the Father, you start living that way without any doubt at all. Yeah. No matter what situation happens, no matter whether it's happening inside of you or outside of you, inside of us, you have no doubt at all. And can no one stop you? And believe me, they try. So what do you think, I just thought about this, what do you think about that Jesus actually has nothing to do with anything? Like, obviously, we needed him to do what he did, but what if it was just more so about faith? Who? What if it was more so about faith? What What if it wasn't even about? What if there was no importance on Jesus's being in human oh, form, see. and it was just mainly about people realizing that it's you? I got it. But it's before not Jesus. Jesus came, there was nothing to believe in. There was no way out. Right. So, but do you think that people now put this over importance on Jesus being the reason when it was the faith? 
Which oh, is I see. The reason. The belief, yeah. You're yeah. right. They made Jesus out of God, so they focus on the physical person rather than the spirit. Right. And that's why they maybe they think that's why he he is the God and <laughs> what the Oh man. So, um uh, okay. Yeah. So it, so what do you think that her touching the garment is almost metaphorically to the spirit of Jesus? Or yeah. was okay, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize it, Jesus was more about the spirit, healing the spirit. And they use physical example, but it's really about the spirit, healing inwardly. Uh, Hate said <laughs> journalists think their, that their mission is to do both those things. Like what you mentioned, which is best to... Yeah, whatever. comfort, yeah. Yeah. He think he said the the journalists think they should do both. Journalists think that they should do both. Their mission is to do both of those things. Interesting. There's this false pedestal thing that people put on Jesus to make him to be more than what he is. When he even said that he's the Son of Man, he even said that he was in human form, and he even said that we'll do greater things. But people love to attach God and all these miracles to Jesus as if it's unattainable and making him out to be way more Im important than what he needs to be. What he, but what it sounds like J Jeff was saying he didn't believe that Jesus was God. No, he said he believes that that, that Emmanuel thing is saying that he is God. Oh, uh-uh. I'm confused. <laughs> Last word. Um, do you believe that everything is exactly as it should be? Yes, but it is not so. Absolutely. All right. That's my last word. <laughs> Hassan, last word. Um, Jesus is Lord. And Hassan <laughs> got the Jesus shirt, too. <laughs> and, uh, my experts, folks. Let me hear from my experts. Amazing. Nice. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it.